All right, welcome everybody, and I hope you can see my screen. Uh, basically, I have made a presentation uh, for you guys, and uh, after the presentation, you can ask me questions. Right. So, uh, uh, in this, let's see. Okay, so let's get started. Yeah, so uh, basically the title of this presentation is uh, Stopping here loss and rigoring it all back is a strategy, right? And if you don't have a strategy, if you don't know how to do it, uh, it is very hard to actually get results and keep the results a long term. And uh, basically what you need, you need a plan, right? And without a plan, you are basically walking in the dark because if you don't have a plan, you don't know what, what is happening, how how you be able to sustain, sustain regrow, uh, how to maintain it uh, when it basically can stop uh, when you can stop these things when you can cycle these things and so on right so you need to have a plan in place before uh, before you actually start to do any treatment at all right and uh, this is a big part of my success because I uh, was basically able to plan it out and understand it and break it down in the, into kind of smaller pieces and uh, have a strategy to actually be able to uh, really go my hair back again and keep it. And uh, without a plan, stopping here fall or maintaining regrowth is very difficult, right? So a uh, plan is essential. And here is my own results. Uh, here is basically my hair when I was uh, dealing with hair loss uh, back in 2009. You can see how uh, how thin my hair was at that time compared to uh, current hair situation, what I have now, right? And uh, you can see clearly that there's a huge difference between those two pictures. And this happened uh, this is possible, basically, guys, if you understand what is happening and what is causing your hair loss issue. And uh, my name is Alex. For those who don't know it, uh, I help guys with hair thinning issues and I resolve them and uh, help them to get uh, regrow. Right? So this is uh, basically something I do, and I've been doing it for uh, two years now, since 2018. And here's what I typically see for guys happening when it comes to hair loss and hair treatment. And basically what happens is that uh, they have uh, ups and downs, right? There are uh, a lot of things going on, and they, they basically, it's kind of, it's kind of a roller coaster, right? They have results, and then uh, they have shedding cycles, and the results again, and the rebounds, and the shedding cycles. And what happens basically, they are not able to sustain those results long term, right? They have too many ups and downs, and those ups and downs always kind of put pressure on the mindset, on the uh, one's thinking, and the, basically one is always afraid that one day. It can stop working, right? Because one uh, is not sure how long it actually will uh, last, what will happen, uh, and so on. Right? So basically, you need to have a plan uh, to be able to get results and keep those results without all those ups and downs, right? Because you don't want to kind of have this uncertainty. Right? You want to be certain that if you do those kind of things, if you do those action steps, you will be able to get results and keep those results a long term, right? So this is kind of thing. So. And uh, I have been able to uh, minimize my shed cycles uh, and basically able to keep the hair what I have uh, over many years now, over six years. And uh, often I see the guys who contact me, they are, may, are able to get results for uh, three months, six months, uh, one year, two years, but then suddenly ha something happens and they start to lose hair again. Right? And this is not something you want guys to happen because you want to have a certainty that on control that you will be able to keep those results long term. And uh, basically what is the thing is that you need to find out what is actually causing your hair loss because every hair loss is kind of different. Right? It's not everybody has the same uh, same problem. right? So you need to understand which what kind of problem you are having and uh, find the right solution to that problem. Right? And then you are able to solve this issue. And uh, there are typically different types of uh, things that can cause hair loss. Right? You have DHT, that is like a most common one and everybody knows about it. But there are other things like scalp issues, uh, dermatitis, uh, different inflammation types and so on. That's right? so kind of cause here uh, falling out. Um, stress is also something that needs to be addressed and can cause hair loss. Even things like sleep, right? if you don't sleep enough, it also can lead to hair loss problems. And the lifestyle, uh, diet, all those things, right? And also, I have an experience in the, for myself is that if I take, uh, let's say, antibiotics, 
I would also have a hair shed afterwards, right? So, so medication also can uh, lead to hair fall, right? So one needs to know what, what is actually happening, right? And here is a quick uh, picture of the structure of the hair. You can see that uh, basically uh, surface is quite easy, right? But uh, everything that happens on beyond the surface, it's, uh, it's quite complicated and there's a lot of things going on that can make, um, like, a, like, a, like I showed this picture here, can make a hair treatment ineffective, right? Because uh, if you guys do experience some kind of scalp issues like inflammation, it will be very hard to actually get results by taking drug like phenosteride right? or applying minoxidil for that case, because they basically won't work. And here are my hair before I started to lose hair. It was a few years ago. And uh, you can see that uh, I had full set of hair right? before I started to lose hair. And uh, my hair were perfect at that time. Uh, it was like, I never was, never was believing that I would be able to start to lose hair right? because my hair was very good. I was super happy with them. Uh, I loved the styles in many way possible, right? So I had full set of hair. But uh, then of course, uh, I start to lose here, right? and in five years I went from this guy here, right, full full set of here, uh, to this guy here, uh, with uh, basically kind of clearly see how bad my temples were looking at that time, and I had diffuse thinning, and so this means basically that I was losing my hair all over the scalp, uh, temples, here and everywhere. So it was uh, quite bad at that time. And um, uh, let's see, next one here. Here are my four uh, four months results. Uh, on treatment. You can see that I was able to uh, nicely recover my temples already after four months. Right? This is all new regrow, right? Compared to where I had bald areas uh, in the past. And often guys ask me if it's like, when does the hair grow back? Does it grow back the same speed on both sides, like both temples? And uh, from my experience, it's not always the case. And uh, for me, uh, it happened like a faster in one side and the other side. Right? My uh, left temple always is growing faster, even nowadays. You can see that uh, it uh, looks awesome and everything, but uh, one of the temples is kind of uh, kind of better filled in the other one. Right? But uh, it's quite a typical thing. And uh, usually they kind of catch up uh, both of them after some time. Right? Uh, and also other thing is that when one lose here, especially in, uh, in my case as well, when I start to lose here, I also did lose here faster than one temple, area is another temple. Right. So as they were falling out faster in one area is another. Uh, but of course, other area also catch it up after some time. And here is my six uh, months results from preparation in 2009. Uh, 12 months results from preparation. You can see that I was nicely recovering uh, by taking DHT blocker drug like preparation. And here's my two year peak results from preparation. Uh, basically, you can see that uh, I still had some uh, temple thinning around here, right? Uh, but uh, recovery was very nice. Right? It was like two years with the hair ego, right? Every month was getting better and better. And uh, it was awesome. One second. <clears throat> but I, I kind of also, also, also knew that one day I would lose those here because um, I had awesome results, but I didn't have a control, right? I did not, not know what was causing it. Yes, I was taking Propecia, but uh, I was all, always afraid that maybe one day what happened if Propecia stopped working, right? Or what happened if uh, something else started to uh, make my hair fall out again? And uh, I was always kind of <clears throat> worried how long it, I would actually be able to keep those hair. So it was like, uh, yes, I had results, but I always uh, was always scared that maybe those results will fall out again. And uh, suddenly it did happen. Right? After two years mark of awesome results in Propecia, I started to lose hair again, right? And you can see that how basically one day I started to, uh, I just kind of take my hand through my hair and I was like losing 30 hair in just one, uh, one um, moment. And it was quite bad at that time, right? I was losing a lot of hairs. And in just a few, few months, in four months, this is how my hair looked like uh, at that time, right? From uh, peak results from Propecia to these results after, basically after two, uh, four months. And uh, I was panicking at that time, right? Because I didn't know what was happening. Uh, at that time, I actually had inflammation in my scalp, right? So this was kind of causing my issue. And in 2011, I actually did uh, use 
hair concealers because uh, my hair were at this stage. So I was kind of um, thinking that I need to try to hide it. Right? And I was using Topic uh, and I was uploading. And you can see that uh, my hairline was looking very fake. Uh, I guess I was maybe applying it wrong or something. But uh, for me, uh, uh, Topic did not work at all. Right? Everybody could spot that I was losing losing hair and I was using something to conceal it. Right? So uh, I tried it for a few months, but uh, what I noticed is that a lot of people just kind of, when I was talking with them, they just look it up my, of my, uh, my scalp so, and I knew that there was some kind of problem. Right? And uh, this is one of the few pictures I had from that time. And you can clearly see uh, how fake my hairline was looking by using Topic. So. And here's my situation in 2012 compared to 2015, right? So in 2012, I was able to kind of uh, stabilize and understand what was going on in a way. I thought it was still early stages and I still didn't have all the understanding, all the stuff, but I had some, some, some things that I was able to connect, some good dots, and I was able to start to kind of stabilize my hair dots. So uh, I still had the scalp information. You can re see redness on the scalp, right? There was a lot of redness and my scalp was kind of red pink basically on a daily basis but over time i was able to kind of fix it and uh, when i started with growth stimulation a few years later i was able to recover basically all of my hair right? you can see how nicely my hair looked like in 2015 right and this is like five years now five years ago right and i still have my hair so this is kind of point here and uh, I often get the question, do hair follicles die, right? And uh, again, it is uh, all about how long hair loss has been going on, what is causing it, how good you are to solve it, and uh, how good you are to maintain uh, this thing. Right? Because if, let's say if hair loss is caused by diet, and if you uh, get back to bad diet again, bad uh, eating habits, then hair loss will return. Right? So you need to kind of uh, always be able to manage it, uh, but at the same time knowing what is actually causing it. Right. And you can see how my temples are looking like. Right? It was uh, basically bald and I was diffuse thinning all over the scalp, but I was able to recover from it. Right? So it is possible to recover from it if one takes right action and understands what's happening. And uh, this is basically my hairline now. Right? This is a picture I have taken in the night a few days ago. And this is a picture of the daytime. Right? You can clearly see that my hair looks quite perfect. Right? And this is how it should be. Right? Uh, yes, and uh, here are some pictures of me over the years, uh, from 2006 to 2020. Uh, you can see that uh, from 2006 to 2013 or 14, I basically had a lot of ups and downs, right? I did not have a control and I didn't have a plan what was happening, how long I was able to keep those results. Uh, I, I had good results, yes. But I was not, uh, I was always worried that they one day would kind of fall out because I did not have the control over this situation. I didn't have a plan. Right? And uh, you can see when I started to have a clue understanding what was happening, I was able to not just recover it, but also keep those here. And they didn't fall out uh, again. So, as you know, guys, I'm not a dermatologist, I'm not a healthcare consultant or doctor, but I still was able to uh, find out what is actually happening on how to solve this issue. And I, in this presentation, I will show you some things you can do to understand it, what was happen, happening for you as well. Right? Uh, and uh, I tried to study it and tested most of the treatments that were available from 2006 to 2014. Right? I was basically uh, going in uh, most after uh, the university, when I was finished with my uh, university classes, I went home and basically studied hair loss, how to actually solve this issue and what was working, what was not working, and so on. Right? So uh, it was like a, um, all those years, it was like a big part of my, the thing is that I was spending most time on, right? on solving this yellow issue. And uh, my, kind of my advice for you guys is to make a log, right? start tracking what's happening. Right? If you have a log and you understand and you track what is happening with your hair, uh, you are uh, able to measure it. Right? So it's, it's not a guessing game. Right? So, if you uh, start tracking your shedding, you start tracking uh, how products affect uh, your hair loss, uh, what things uh, do work, what doesn't work, right? And this is what I did, right? Uh, this is what, how I was able to solve my hair loss issue, understand what was causing it, and uh, 
able to uh, regrow it back again. Right? So because I was starting tracking it uh, and uh, having a strategy on, uh, on the, or control of the situation, right? because I started to notice things, I started to see patterns, trends, all this stuff, right? And this is that basically uh, some of the Excel sheets I was using back then. Uh, and you can see that I was tracking different shampoos, how they affected my hair, what was happening, how how I was like, how much I was losing over the daily basis by applying uh, topicals, by taking supplements, uh, which one had more effect, which one caused my scalp uh, uh, kind of more inflammated or uh, made my sh hair shed worse, all those things, right? And over time, I was able to uh, find us what was happening and connect the dots and uh, get results. Right? So this was kind of my thing. And uh, <clears throat> basically, this is what happened for me uh, after profession stopped working. At first, I had, like I said before, awesome results from profession, and then two years of continuous hair power. Right? And uh, but then I was able to uh, find out what was happening by using tracking, by using uh, logging my hair. I was journaling every day what was going on with my hair. I was uh, able to find a solution, right? and then I got regrow. I had some sheds because there is always shed cycles that you, you won't be able to stop them, but you can minimize them, right? The hair may shed, but you still get uh, out of the track and there are not, not those deep falls like uh, most guys have, but you have some sheds, yes, uh, but it's kind of stop, stable shed that you can control. And then it's the new regrow, a bit shed, new regrow, and this kind of continues, right? Um, yes, and the uh, question I often get asked, why didn't I do hair transplant? And the reason is that hair transplant, like uh, it is a med, like a, it is a procedure, right? And uh, it involves risks. And uh, this is not something I wanted to experience, right? And uh, the thing is with hair transplant is that you cannot uh, get uh, back to baseline, right? You you cannot uh, kind of reverse it. So if you are not happy with hair transplant, you cannot get back. Right? So this is like procedures that is like uh, done and then it's a the game over right? if it's, you're not happy with it. And uh, here are some studies I have found and this basically shows that most uh, uh, patients complain about hair transplants, right? Like 54% uh, are not happy with density and there is other things that they're basically not happy with. Right? So uh, what happens is uh, usually guys who do it, they need to do it uh, multiple times to actually get results that they are happy with. And other thing with hair transplants is that they actually need to keep taking uh, different uh, things to be able to maintain uh, here and uh, be able to kind of keep results, right? Because uh, yes, they transfer the hair, but uh, the real hairs that are from there in the past, they will still basically be either DHT dependent or uh, they will shed out over time, right? So one needs to do things to stop the process from happening. So that's why uh, you can see the statistics, how many of the patients need to actually take medication, like the Propecia, uh, Plaminoxidil, or uh, Casino Shampoo and so on, right? So uh, it is not final solution. Right? This is kind of my thing here. Uh, one second, I need to drink a bit here. Yes, so, so what do you need to solve hair loss? You need the strategy, you need the action plan, uh, you need understanding and structure, right? And if you have those three things in place, you are able to get results uh, and keep those results long term, right? This is kind of thing. And you can do it yourself, or you can get men mentorship on guidance from someone who was able to reverse his hair loss, like me. I was able to do it, and I was able to keep those results long term. So, uh, since uh, basically since 2018, I have been coaching guys with this hair loss issue. Um, and I have had my blog, I have had YouTube, an ebook, and so on. So I've been doing it for quite some time. And here are results from uh, one of the guys uh, who was on my program back in 2018. He just sent me those pictures, uh, like update, uh, like a few days ago. And the thing is that he was, uh, he was on the treatment, he got awesome results, but then he kind of got uh, lazy and he stopped this treatment. So uh, basically he needed to restart it. And uh, after he restarted, this is his results uh, second time of regrowing here back again. 
So what is Rapid Regrow program? It is a customized plan to regrow your hair, right? a step-by-step -step guide uh, over six months. And uh, it includes maintenance plan after program ends. So you have basically full control of what happens and you are able to sustain and keep those results long-term, right? It's a long-term solution, right? As long as you understand your triggers, as long as you are doing things to prevent uh, from having triggers outbreak, you are able to keep here long-term, right? This is kind of the thing. And uh, if you uh, want to know more uh, or want to join my program, it is fully possible. I do work with a few uh, people over, uh, over my programs. And uh, if it uh, sounds like you want to do something about it and you are seriously interested about sol solving this problem, uh, then let's talk. You can schedule a call below the studio and uh, see how I help you. Uh, yes. So uh, if you're ready for it, schedule a call below the studio and we can get started. And if you agree to work together, you can start as little as 1,000. Uh, okay, guys, that was all. And here is questions. Uh, that you may have, I can answer them. <clears throat> Let's see. So basically, start with the first question I have here. And it's, uh, uh, let's see. Why it's so hard to regrow temples? Uh, it's from Patrick. Why it's so hard to regrow temples? And uh, what can you do to make it uh, grow faster? Uh, basically, you just, uh, if, you are, if you know that you are getting results and uh, things are pointing in the right direction, uh, then you need to be patient. Right? Um, the question is how long you actually have been, been doing this treatment and uh, other things, right? Because if you do have still online issues that is causing hair loss, uh, you need to address them as well, right? Uh, and uh, that may help to grow the temples faster. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, hey, Alex, uh, which medication are you using? I take uh, finasteride. Uh, I apply aminoxidil, I do use casanola shampoo, and I do use mic needling or dermo roller. So this is basically what I, what I do for my hair. Um, yes. Uh, let's see, next one. Uh, okay. Yes, dermo rolling and scalp massage to increase blood flow. Yes, uh, there are studies that show that the dermo rolling actually can help this hair grow as well by itself. And I have seen some uh, guys in my program who just do demo rolling and are able to get results. So it is possible. Um, what do you recommend if finasteride doesn't work anymore and even throat is working in the past? Yes, uh, the question is, uh, uh, question is if there's something else that's causing a hair loss issue for you, right? Because uh, let's say if you, uh, if you had the good results from uh, finasteride and then it stops kind of working, maybe there are other issues that came up, right? You need to kind of find out what, what is happening, what, what is actually causing this problem. Right? Uh, are you using finasteride only or are you using minoxidil as well? Uh, which is better combination is finasteride? Yes, I, like I said previously, I do use uh, finasteride and minoxidil. So. Uh, I need to do it because I need to block DHT and I also need to stimulate Vigro, so I do uh, minoxidil in my scalp. So. Uh, could you give more specific about what was causing your uh, hair loss, the root cause? Uh, my root cause was DHT. It was, uh, it was also uh, inflammatory hair follicles, cell bone buildup, uh, or oil, uh, overproduction of oil on the scalp, so my scalp was oil, always oily. Those are basically uh, minor reasons why I was losing here. Uh, back then. Alex, is it normal to find 60 to 70 hairs in the shower uh, every two days because it takes over two days? Um, uh, it depends, right? If your scalp uh, feels fine uh, and you are taking, let's say, finasteride and uh, you don't see or notice any hair thinning, then I guess it's okay. Right? But if you actually uh, have issues, 
uh, then um, then it's different right? because uh, let's say if your scalp uh, is not feeling well and you're not taking any DHC blockers and uh, you find 60 70 years uh, then it can be a problem right and you also should check endings over here see what kind of endings they have uh, it could be important uh, okay uh, next one, best way to thicken uh, thinning here. Uh, it's basically to get rid of them back again and finding out what is actually causing your here uh, here loss in the first place, right? Because uh, it can be uh, if it's just a uh, let's say if it's just DHTs and taking DHT blocker can solve this problem. Right? Uh, do you recommend uh, do the speed? Do you think it's safe? Uh, it do work, right? Do the speed do work? I did use it myself in past. Uh, I was on the street for, uh, I think in total, like for uh, three to four months. Uh, I get very nice results, yes, but uh, I also got side effects from it. So it does work, but uh, I would, uh, for, in my case, it was not worth it. So uh, I used it for those few months. I did see results, but afterwards I just get back to uh, Propecia because uh, Propecia has never given me side effects and uh, I find it much more safe long term so that's why i kind of like it much better okay next one uh, how to stop down the roof um to stop down the roof you basically yeah find the right shampoo for example you can use a casanola shampoo uh, casanola is uh, something that uh, can help with down the roof that's one way to do it uh, you can also find out what, what is actually uh, causing this down the roof issue maybe you have some skull problems and um, those kind of things right uh, okay, next one. How long should I keep dandruff shampoo on my hair before I wash it out? Of uh, depends on what kind of shampoo you're using, uh, but uh, typical time frame is between three minutes to five minutes. Right? But again, it depends on which kind of shampoo. Yes. Okay. Let's see if there is more questions uh, coming here. Yeah. If there is no more questions, uh, I will. Uh, stop for today. Uh, okay, how long uh, of the demo and needles you, you recommend? I use uh, like it it's, uh, depends on uh, basically your scalp conditions, right? Um, it depends on how often you roll it. Uh, because if you roll it too often, you maybe uh, can't use longer needles like I use 1.5 but it entirely depends on uh, the situation and uh, how how hard you are actually rolling and so on so you, you basically need to be careful to find out uh, which one suits best for you and uh, well uh, you need to check uh, other things as well so uh, it's, it's not as simple because if you over them roller or my over micro needle your scalp it can cause issues right you can uh, get inflammation you can uh, absorb too much minoxidil into the, your scalp and uh, it can lead to other problems. So it's true. you need to be careful with it. Uh, okay, when do you think full results of Finastri show? How long does it take? Uh, for me, it did take uh, like uh, four months to see first results, right? but it depends entirely on the situation. Uh, some guys see results uh, like uh, a bit sooner, like after three months, and some see it later. It depends on um, other factors like how uh, how is here uh, here situation um, and basically if it's just DHT is causing it and uh, other things right so um, <clears throat> I would say like uh, three to four months to see first results uh, and to see full results uh, up to um, up to one year one and a half years uh, next one uh, what is mine cause of early oily scalp possibly diet uh, it's often a cause or uh, Possibly a bronze product, the one applies on the scalp, other thing, or genetics. Um, uh, I have baby here at Temples after four months of minoxidil. I'm 20 years old. Uh, can it grow bigger with uh, finasteride? Yes, it, it is possible, right? But uh, again, it depends on. Uh, it depends on if your only issue is actually DHT or, or it's just something else that is causing this problem. 
Next one, uh, how much Shiminoxy do you suggest putting if I shave my head to apply it uh, better? Uh, to cover all, all of the scalp, you need to apply it. Like, uh, uh, like if you do have a diffuse thinning and you want to, uh, kind of didn't say what kind of problem you have, but if it's diffuse thinning and you want to apply it all over the scalp, you most likely will need like a, a 1.5, uh, 1.8 milliliters uh, each time you apply it on your scalp. So, uh, okay, guys, uh, I will finish uh, for today and uh, I hope you did enjoy uh, this call. Uh, and uh, if there is anything, uh, just uh, you can leave the comment below this video and I will check it up uh, uh, afterwards. Okay. Uh, yes, that is all for today and I uh, hope you enjoy my. Uh, live stream. Cheers.